Hey gang, Chris Maholka here. I'm starting this series of videos on dubbing. We're going to cover a lot of things. Where to get it, how to dye it, how to blend it, and how to use it. So we're going to get started with this simple video on where does it come from and how can you get a large supply of it for very little money. When you start fly tying, you see all kinds of things. Like here's a hairsier blend of dubbing. You get different colors for steelhead. And a lot of different things for... Uh, trout nymphs and different types of bugs, bass bugs and things. And most of these are rabbit dubbing. When Bob Borden started a hairline dubbing years ago, he started out with his hairline dubbing. When you buy it today, the hairline dubbing or hairline dubbing is pure rabbit. You'll also find on Bob's product line, Hairtron. Hair, rabbit hair, Tron, and Tron. So this is a blended dubbing, which you start out with the base of rabbit and add things to it. And we're going to show you how to do that as well. So let's get started. The process of making dubbing is not rocket science. There are a few things you'll need to help you get started. First thing we have to do is source our materials. Now, all the different dubbings I've showed you, being rabbit, come from one place. Rabbit fur, rabbit pelts. Now, these can be purchased in white, if you're gonna dye your own, uh, in craft stores, in hobby stores, or if you're lucky like me, every year here in town, there is a gathering of people that do reenactments of Civil War battles and old frontier battles and things, and you'll find people that have these for sale for making costumes, and they run about a buck and a half a piece. Now, this is a lot of dubbing for a dollar and a half. So if you're going to dye them, you can start out with white. If you're doing things like hare's ear nymphs or uh, fleeter mouse or different types of nymphs that use a natural color, this is a cottontail patch or cottontail pelt. You can get these the same types of places. If you're lucky enough to have anybody that hunts rabbits around, you can usually get pelts from them. Now, since we're doing the dubbing from the pelts, you don't need to have it tanned if you don't want to. You can start with a, a fresh pelt or a salted pelt and get the fur off of it, and you'll use the fur for your dubbing. So those are a couple ways you can get the materials to start with. There are two items that really make this process go quickly and better if you're doing a variety or a quantity of dubbing. First is hair clippers. These are, this is a rechargeable pet uh, type hair clipper that you can use for your dogs or your cats. I'll provide a link to these on the bottom of my uh, YouTube page. You can find these on Amazon. The second thing is a coffee grinder. This is used to blend the dubbing up to give you a nice uniform mix. You can buy these new, buy them online. Uh, mine has the proverbial red sticker from the secondhand store here in town. So uh, you can pick them up for you know usually a couple bucks. Uh, plug them in, make sure they work, and rinse them out or wipe them out good before you use them so your dubbing doesn't smell like coffee grounds. Now, the reason we use pet clippers on these instead of your standard clippers you use at home for cutting your kids hair is if you didn't know there's a difference between hair and fur hair is all pretty much one length no undergrowth on it at all it's just a single strand so clippers that have a a coarse blade on them can cut hair for your haircut when you're doing fur it has the long hairs on top and then the thick under fur so you need something that's fine and also very powerful to cut through that. When you set the adjustment on your blades, and these have adjustable blades, you don't want your blade to have a long gap between the, the foot and the blade because this allows the short hair to get away from you, and you don't want that. You want the blade right up tight with the comb. So when you go down to the hair, or down to the, the skin here, or the hide, you're cutting every bit of that fur. Now it's just a simple matter of starting them up, holding them flat against the hide so you don't cut the hide, and moving slowly along. And you cut, you'll see it coming up in front. There's a bunch of dubbing. 
there's a bunch more. You see how the hair lays in this direction, the natural hide? You don't want to go with the flow of the hair because you'll just end up riding on top of it and cutting off the top surface. You want to go against it so as you're cutting it stands up against your clippers. That way it allows you to get right down tight against the hide. You don't want to force it, you just want to go slow and let the clippers do their, their thing and it will come out with a nice clean hide and all of your fur together in your trimmings. Once we've got it cut you can see that it's you know you're gray in one side you're tan on the other if you're doing something you want legs on your pattern you can grab hold of the tips and pull the base out and use this for you know legging material but since we're talking dubbing the next thing you need to do is blend it before you start using your new coffee maker you need to make a little adjustment on it to uh, help you blend your dubbing well these are made to grind beans or to cut coffee beans. So the little blades in there are sharp. Now this needs to be done with the unit unplugged. And what you're going to do is find the sharp edge, whichever way it spins, and use any kind of a little file. And you just need to go in on those blades and just rough them up because you don't want sharp blades blending your dubbing. You'll end up with powder dubbing. So just some roughing on that will uh, take the edge off so the dubbing doesn't get cut, so it blends. Now we'll take our fur that we trimmed off. Might be a little much, but it should be okay. Put it in the blender, give it a few punches. Now you don't want to grind this to a pulp, you want to blend it. A few touches and you've got a nice mixed batch of blended dubbing. This color would work well for a dark hare's ear or for an Adams. It would be extremely good for the body on an Adams. And that's how you make your own dubbing. I appreciate you watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button and boost my subscriptions up there so YouTube will continue to pay me a little royalty on these videos. Here's a money saving tip I'll offer you for the end of the video. This is a hide that I bought as a whole stripped rabbit. Now always on the edges, always at the top there's some extra fur that you can't use to tie zonkers or whatever. However, if you take that piece of fur that's not usable for anything else that you might have sitting around. Hit it with the clippers. This is very thick, nice rabbit fur. Shave a bunch of that off there. And don't let your assistant eat it. Punch it a couple times in your dubbing blender. Now you have a nice olive dubbing for those little blue wing olives or bait fish patterns where you need a body dubbing. Don't waste the material, blend it up, have matching dubbing. Thanks for watching.